Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And we're live tonight. This is April the 27th in the year 2012. And I've been gone the last couple of weeks. Uh, we had our UFO conference here in Eureka Springs, and it was a really big one this time. There was a, about over 550 people, so they were very pleased with that. But then I went to the Bahamas to speak at an ashram down there, and I've done that before, and that always is interesting, and I have a little bit of time when I can relax down there. Uh well, we've got my daughter Julia is is still at our office in England. She hasn't come back to the states yet, so she's on the line too uh, via Skype. So you're there, aren't you? I'm here. I'm sleeping. Barely but awake I'm here. over there. It's one o'clock in the morning every time we call there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, before we get going, I do want to say something about the UFO conference. Uh, this time they had a memorial to Lou Farish. Everyone knew him as Lucius. I mean, that was his name was Lucius, but everybody called him Lou Farish. And he was the one that began the whole UFO conference. And I worked with him for 25 years putting this whole thing together. And uh, this was his life, really, because um, he's a very quiet man but an extremely good and kind person, and we were very good friends. And he died in January of cancer, and so it seemed strange to not have him there. But they had a wonderful memorial and a presentation that they showed pictures of him as a child and all through his life. And um, it was really good, because I think if Lou would have been there, he would have liked it. And they even made a remark, he's probably here watching, and I think he probably would have been. <laughs> but another thing that has happened with Lou, if you remember, he used to have the UFO clip, news clipping service. He had that for many years, uh, sending out newspapers of UFO clippings from all over the world. And he did that for a long, long time until the Internet became to be popular and then there wasn't as much demand for newspapers. Plus, the cost of news clipping went up to where it was harder and harder for him to do it. But you may remember he did that for many years, along with the UFO conference. But he was a very quiet, a very private person. And when he died, he had no heirs. But he had land and a house down in... Um, the middle of Arkansas. So they said he willed all of that, that it, his land, they think they're probably going to sell it, I guess, if they've not already done it. And the land in the house, and the money is going into a trust fund. And I'm, I asked him if I could be involved with this because, you know, we've known each other for such a long time. The trust fund is going to be to set up scholarships for UFO research. So we're going to be, I guess, looking for people, and are they going to be doing some kind of promotions of people who want to do research into UFOs, or if they have ideas or things they want to approach the committee with, this is going to be very good because it will encourage Lou's gift, what he wanted to do with always the investigation of UFOs. This will continue what he wanted to do, and I asked to be involved with it and kept in the loop so I'll know what, how that is happening. But anybody that's interested in that can email us, and we'll tell you more as we find out more and as it goes along. But it's going to be the Lucius Farish uh, Trust Fund for UFO Research and Scholarships. It's going to be exciting to see how this uh, progresses. And I think, you know, Lou, I think he agreed to all this before he died. I can't think of any better legacy for him than to continue his work in this way. Oh, so that was really nice that we had that at the UFO conference. And then I went down to the Bahamas, and they always have the yoga teachers training retreats down there. 
and I've gone down there many times and lectured. And everywhere I go now, there are just so many young people are becoming more and more interested in metaphysics and spiritual things. And it was true down there, too. The UFO conference also was full of young people, many of them just discovering all of this, which seems funny when we have been at it for so many years. Some of them are just now becoming interested. And the same with the Bahamas. These are young people who are just becoming interested in spirituality. Not like it used to be, where you had to hide what you believed and what you thought. Now you can come out into the open because it seems like everybody is into this now. Okay, Julie, do you want to say anything about that? Oh, I just, um, on, on Lou, I'm so glad to see that, that this is happening with him because he is such a precious man, and so it's wonderful that that's carrying on, and I'm glad to see that. Um, and then on the, uh, yeah, it, this is the shift that's happening, and these young people, that's exactly what's going on. They're, I'm glad to see they're coming in because that's what we kept saying a few years ago is where are all the young people? Um, so this shows the shift that's happening and the new, you know, all these new souls that are here, that they're they're finding it. Can we real quickly, before we go too much further, is you want to remind everybody what the toll-free call-in number is? Oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. Okay, the toll-free toll call-in number, and I believe it's good all over the world, is 888-627-6008. 888-627-6008. If anybody Next. wants to call in tonight, because we're just going to be talking, we don't have a guest. Yeah, so actually, anybody wants being, to call in, we I'm welcome being... that. Actually, I'm being shown that that's good for USA and Canada. If uh, uh, another part of the world, we have a toll number. That's 530-327-7602. So that would be the toll number you would use. Okay, that okay, should get our numbers out. <laughs> yeah, repeat that. I haven't, haven't got that number here. 530-327-7602. Seven six zero two. That's one of the lines. They've got four different lines they can call into, but that's one of them. Okay. Because all I have is the other one, and it used to be good all over the world, but I guess now uh, they have they have so much uh, activity that they uh, have to put some other lines in. Mm, yeah. But you know, we we've, we've noticed it during the last year when we're going to all these conferences and talking to people, and we have sellout crowds. The uh, auditorium is packed everywhere, even in China, where I just came from, mm -hmm. and it's all these young people, and they're, you can feel the ripple of excitement that goes through the audience. They really want this; they're hungry for this knowledge. Absolutely. Well, they're they're shifting. Um, cause I know there's gotta be more than what is, is out there and everything. Um, there is a caller on, Dolores is on line one. So. Oh, I'm on line one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's another one. <laughs> I'm going to be talking to myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess we can go ahead with that. Cause I got a oh, few amen. things I want to bring up before the show is <laughs> over, but let's go ahead with the caller. Well, apparently I'm wrong. It is you on line one. <laughs> Oh, oh I my goodness, you but you one. made a mistake. Okay, he's saying, you... he's saying you're on line one. Okay, I need to give out a different number for call-in. So that is 530-413-4522. 530-413-4522. Apparently the number I gave out before is the number that you're on, so that won't work. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, so I think I'm making it straight now. <laughs> No, I can't very well interview myself, can I? Uh, no, I don't think so. We'll, we'll try. <laughs> okay, but now we got the, the lines out there, and anybody that wants to call in is welcome to do it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I do have some more things I do want to bring up until somebody does call in. But that was right. funny. I thought it was a joke, and it wasn't a joke, was it? <laughs> No, I okay. yeah, I didn't understand what he was telling me. He's typing me messages, and I didn't understand what he was saying. And that was, I thought, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, okay. I have to learn this. But. I do want to bring up before uh, we get 
you know, too far into the show. In two weeks, I'm going to be in L.A. And that's right. May uh, 12th and 13th. And I'm going to be doing a two-day seminar in L.A. with Dee Wallace. And if you remember Dee Wallace, she's a firecracker. And she's still very active in the movies and the TV. I think it's the show The Office is what she's been having a lot of uh, parts on that lately, hasn't she? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's in yeah. still in movies and several television shows and very much into metaphysics. And it was last year, last summer, when we did a nationwide tour together. So I got to know her very well, and she she is a firecracker. She's so full of energy. And she decided, why don't we do a seminar together? And we've been able to get all of this worked into our schedules because hers is as hectic as mine is. So um, it's May uh, 12th and 13th in L.A., and it's going to be at the Embassy Suites South Hotel, right by the airport, Embassy Suites South. And uh, we're going to be doing something I've never done before. I've done lectures on creating your reality. But she has some wonderful ideas of doing the two days of creating your reality and how to make anything you want come true and how you can do this. And my part in all of this, we're going to be doing uh, group regressions with everybody who's there to try to find out if there's anything in your past lives that are holding you back from attaining what your goal is and what your dream is. We're going to be doing that, and then we're going to be taking people ahead into the future to see what it's like when they attain their goal. So this is going to be exciting. It's something different. And, of course, we never know what's going to happen when we try new things. But uh, anybody who's interested in signing up can go on our website, R.D. Wallace's. But you, I think it should be on ours, don't you think, Julie? Well, if they go to her website and then go to either one, and it will link back to our to your site where the where they purchase the tickets. Um, this will actually be, if I can go a little bit more detail, um, it's about looking into the past, which is what you're saying you'll do a past, you know, a brief past life. It's looking into the past to see what patterns you set up that get in your way in uh, to to not getting you know to and how you are sabotaging yourself for creating and manifesting and then she will help you release those patterns and then you're going to do another future you know like a, a future life or in within go forward life progression in this life to see how you changed what you just changed, you know, to see how it all changes everything for you. So it's a really cool, uh, different workshop. I don't think anybody's done anything like this. I think this is going to be really fantastic. Yeah, Dee does a lot of workshops, but she's not done one like this, and that's why it was her brainchild to come right. up with this. Right, to do something oh, very next different. Week on Next Friday, I'm going to have Dee on our show here, so she'll be able to talk, and anybody calling in be able to talk to Dee Wallace. That's next Friday here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, we actually do have a caller now. <laughs> so, okay. This is Gabriel uh, from New Jersey, we think. So. Okay. Gabriel, um, mm -hmm. Gabriel, let's go ahead. Do you have a question? Uh, Gabriel, are you there? Okay, he, he something happened. He's not there now, so we'll carry on. <laughs> oh, you know the Bible story about Gabriel, don't you? Huh? Tell me about when it. When Gabriel comes and blows his horn, that's the end of the world. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's what not ready to Gabriel blow his horn because this is not the end of the world. <laughs> well, what about when Gabriel disappears? <laughs> okay. I, I'm not making fun of you, Gabriel, if you're still there, but it's just the idea just came to me because everybody keeps saying 2012 is the end of the world. 
Yeah. When we were at the UFO conference, one Isn't of the other speakers was talking to me, and it's a speaker who is very negative. And I made a remark about, well, we're we're booking clear into 2013 because we've got so many places we're going to. He says, do you think, you really think we're going to be around in 2013? And of course we are. Mm-hmm. So I guess there are some people out there who still think, you know, everything's going to end on December the 21st, I guess. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who still think that because that's the probably the majority of the publicity is something to that effect so yeah the negative doom and gloom mm-hmm. and, uh, well everybody's just like they don't know what to expect so yeah but you know uh so i tell everybody look what happened last october i don't remember the date but um where they said that was the real end of the mayan calendar that we were going to have three days of darkness and all the world was going to come to an end. And I said, well, I was going to be in Australia. We'll just see what happens. Mm-hmm. And nothing happened at all. Right. So that's why, that's why I know, we know from our work, too, that nothing is going to happen on that day. Right. Right. I mean, it's, and this is, I mean, I was given the message so clearly last fall, whenever we were doing that tour, we were in Boston um, and it came through so clearly. It's already done. People need to get off of it. You know, it's already done. You will see when you believe it. But if we keep putting it out here on a specified date, then we're not going to see anything until that specified date. So, you know, and if we expect doom and gloom and catastrophe, then guess what? You're going to get it. So it's whatever you are lining up for yourself, that's the world you're going to see, and that's the shift you're going to see. Um, I just prefer to believe. I mean, they told me loud and clear it's already done. So, and, And more and more, we're having experiences here that have been reinforcing this, that we... We we filter out so much stuff that's right in front of us, and it's going on all the time. So, and little by little, we're starting to see some of the things that we are filtering. So, if we're filtering out those things, and how many other things are we filtering out that are right there in front of us that we do not see because we don't have the mind to see it yet. We don't have the acceptance to see it yet. We don't want to believe it, so we're not going to see it. But it could be that it's a completely different world right here, and we're not seeing it because we don't believe it's going to happen until December 21st. <laughs> so, And I like the commercial they keep playing on TV now. It's an insurance company, and mm-hmm. it's very dramatic, and it shows the end of the world and everything. And they said it's supposed to happen on December 21st. But they said, yeah. suppose... The next day, December 22nd, you wake up, and we're still here, and you're still going to need insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so it was an insurance commercial. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good that's, one. that's the way it is, too. Because right. one day is just going to be like the next. Right. Okay, it looks like we have right. Gabriel back. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So. I've, I've had a couple of emails in the last week. You know, I... People, I do read these emails, but we get so many that it's impossible for me to answer each one. But be aware that I do read them, and sometimes some of them get answered, but they're just too many. But I've had a couple in the last week where people are scared, naturally, now they're scared of the new earth. Mm. What's going to happen if I go over there? What about my people left behind? You know, what's going to happen to them? And these, they're carrying fear no matter where they look. Right. And uh, to, in a couple of these, they were wanting to know about the animals. They said, I just hate to think of all the animals staying on the old earth and suffering and all of this. And I've had people ask me this at my uh, lectures, too. So I want to make it loud and clear. The animals are going to, they're not going to be left behind in any kind of horrible situation. Right. Do you have anything to add to that? 
<laughs> yeah, and that's where um, I've, I've told people before, the animals are more aware of what's going on than we are. They see into these other dimensions, as you have found with sessions that you've done. They see all of this stuff. They know what's going on. They know why they're here. A lot of them are here as guides for us. So they're helping us to be more compassionate or to be, you know, maybe get, get attributes that we need to help us move into this vibration or something. They know why they're here. They are, they, they're going to do what they need to. In fact, my animals told me, uh, because I knew I was going to be doing this back and forth, uh, over here to England and I was concerned about leaving them so much. And they, they told me on an energetic level, that they would hold the energy there and they knew what I was doing. So not to be concerned. I had them being taken care of. So, but they were there to hold my energy and their energy there. So, you know, you might get some weird messages and you might go, that's just preposterous. Trust this stuff. I, you know, I tapped in, my guides told me this about my animals. I didn't used to get messages about things like that, but I do now. And it's okay. Believe it. it. I know it's going to be weird. Don't worry about that. But they know what's going on. There's things like that happening. Just trust messages. Trust things that you get. So anyway, but yeah, the animals, and we're going to see even animals that we haven't seen before. So, you know, it's a, it's an exotic place. Um, Mom, the, the uh, Gabriel is back, uh, if you want to take him now. Okay. Okay. Gabriel, are you okay. still there? I'm here now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hope you weren't offended. I just made a joke about your name, but I hope you weren't offended by it. No, I I wasn't offended. The phone just went blank, so I tried back right away. Um, Yeah. I've got my wife. Because, you know, you're hoping Gabriel, you know, that Gabriel blows his horn at the end of the world. So that's what we've been talking about. (laughs) Okay, Gabriel, blow your horn. (laughs) (laughs) What did you want to ask? Well, I, ironically, I am a trumpet player, but, you know, I didn't blow the end of the world. <laughs> okay. I have, okay. I have a question. Uh, my, my, my wife and I are signed up for the course in July, and I just wanted to know, are, are you the actual teacher for it? Yes, I don't allow anyone else to teach my method. I'm teaching it all over the world, and we've already trained thousands and thousands of people, but so far I'm not letting anyone else teach it because I want to make sure it's done correctly. Now, we have people who are trained to practice it, and I want them to use it, but I'm still doing all of the teaching myself. Well, great, and uh, I guess my wife wanted to know, you know, what's the success rate um, you know, once we go to the course of uh, learning it. Well, we have to, you know, like any class you take, you're not going to be able to do it immediately. Although we're having some really good results, but you have to practice any course that you take. And this goes with any kind of a class. So I tell them to go and practice, practice, practice. Anybody, practice on your friends, your family. And even ask people, do you want to be a guinea pig? Because I've just learned how to do this. But you have to get the practice thing to get it down to where you can understand it. And it becomes very easy then. And we have a very high success rate. And we have people all over the world now who are doing this, and they're having the same miracles that I'm having. Even in the class I just well, did in China, we had, oh, we had about 70, 80 people. And we have one day of the class now where you will go and practice on each other. And they were having fantastic results just out of the gate, even having healings and all kinds of amazing things happening. So it just depends on your ability to grasp the concepts. You should be able to do it. But we did find we were doing a three-day class, and people afterwards were afraid to go and try it because it was new and they weren't sure if they were going to be able to do it right. So now we have five days, so we're going to make them practice. <laughs> and that, Julie, wasn't it? We'd done it in L.A. and Hawaii and China, and we've had wonderful results, haven't we? 
Absolutely. And when you made that comment, you won't be able to do it right away. Actually, you learn everything you need to, to, to do it. You will be able to do it right away. She just meaning you won't maybe be proficient and an expert at it, but you will be able to do it. You will know everything you need to know. And, and yet you just sit down there and just follow it step by step by step and it works. That's the beauty of this. And that's what people did because we found you know, a lot of people are afraid to go try. I, I'm the same way. When I started energy work, I was scared to death to do to try it for the first time. This pushes you to get that first one under your belt. And like we said, and it's a very supportive environment. Excellent results. Excellent. It, and this, we this do works. give the people so. a script. I don't like scripts, but it is just to follow until they get it memorized. And we also we give you the entire course is on a flash drive, so you'll have it. You don't have to take a lot of notes. You can go back and refer to everything we've talked about in the class. Well, sounds good. I look forward to seeing you then in July. I really appreciate your work. I've I've read about five or six of your books, and I mean I've just been uh, astounded at the information that you've been able to come up with and. It seems to resonate very well with what I believe in. I'm still writing more books, too. Uh, Julie, did you want to say anything about... See, we're having the conference just before the class. I haven't worked it out yet. Are, are yes. you working mm -hmm. on something with that, Julie? Oh, I don't have that quite worked out yet, but we are going to give... Anyone attending the class, we'll, we'll give them a discount if they you know, to go to the conference. If they want to go to the conference, we'll give a discount. Um, but I don't have all that worked out yet. We will notify everybody that's that's signing up. So, and then we'll put it on the website as well. Um, but that, you know, some of these things we're still we're still creating. <laughs> so I'm working on it. But uh, the, but be expected an offer for you know you'll have an invitation to attend the conference at a discount. Because so, the conference is directly, the conference mm -hmm. is directly before the class. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the information, and I look forward to seeing you in July. And it's going yes. to be a big class, too. We look forward to seeing okay. you again. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot that will help you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have, we have Stephen from New York on the line. Okay, Hi, Stephen. Laura. You have a Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Uh, yeah, do you have uh, a question? Well, yes, yes, I do. Um, well, first, I want to say thank you, Dolores, for your work. Your, your work has really, really helped me in a lot of areas. Um, but my question for you is, uh, is there a moment when we are going to absolutely know, without a shadow of a doubt, that we have made the shift uh, into the new dimension and, and, and there's no going back from there? Is there a moment when we're absolutely going to know? I don't think you're going to want to go back, really. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I um, mean, obviously I wouldn't want to, but is there a moment when we're going to know for sure? Okay, Julie, you answer that because you answer it sometimes when we're doing lectures. I, I'm sure there will be because we're right now we, we, we're fluctuating back and forth and and things can move us one way or the other and we're in here in the middle of things and and – I think there will be a point when we get what I was told is is we're all scattered. It's like there's these two extremes, the old earth and the new earth are sitting here and in between them are all these layers of levels of of gradients if you want to say of of where you know we we are in respect to each one and we move between those uh, based on our emotional reactions to situations, and the the old Earth is representative of very extreme, you know, a lot of hot, heavy emotions and drama, and then the new Earth is over here with light, ease, and joy. And as you react to things, um, you know, and you get all this emotional investment in things, if it's all this dramatic, hot, you know, uh, yucky, heavy, intense emotions that pulls you to that side. And if you, you know, because you choose your reactions and you are in control of your thoughts or anything and you go for the lighter experiences and you don't get caught up into all that junk, 
you know, and you, you pull yourself away from that, that that's you moving yourself to those vibrations of the new earth. Well, as you, you, you know, then so you're moving back and forth. And so a lot of us are kind of in the middle in there. And as we keep moving, yeah. then I think you'll notice more and more. What I was told when I was giving that uh, visual, that was a visual that I was given. And I was explaining that in a lecture one time. And someone asked, well, at what point do these two worlds really pull apart? And they said, uh, when there are no more people in the middle. When there's when there's no more in the middle and they're kind of chosen where they want to be, then the two really move. I bet that's the point that we really can start seeing things. Okay, uh -huh. but it's okay. not an all. It's all of a sudden, aha, and we're there. It's it's very very gradual. Right. But I think, right. like she said, you will realize that something definitely has happened. Things are better. She said, you look around and things seem different. They seem better. You'll know that well, definitely we are moving. Are you noticing because things now? Things are, are you noticing that, things like, like, like what I was talking about a minute ago was like, we're starting to see some things that don't quite make sense in the day-to-day -day used to be world. It's like something, there's something different going. We're seeing some things. And like I said, it's like little things are starting to get through that we're, we're accepting that this is different and it's okay and, and it, it's just enough to make you realize that there's probably a whole lot more just beyond your grasp of the visual, if that makes sense. I'm, I feel like you are too, aren't you? Well, what I've noticed is that I, I went through over the last few years that, you know, all of the body symptoms and my body changing and letting go of resistance and I thought I was done with all of that. And at the beginning of this year, the first few months of this year, it's, it's like I've, I felt this energy momentum picking up and any resistance or any old, you know, fears that weren't completely resolved have come to the surface for mm -hmm. me. And it's been, it, it's been a process of letting go any, of any uh, remaining resistance that, that was there. And I've noticed it with, with other people um, Actually, almost everybody <laughs> that yeah. that I know, it's like this letting go of any any resistance that's still there. But I also have noticed changes in my in my body a lot. Um, I, I keep moving to a lighter diet um, yeah. and uh, you know less less meats. Um, I'm I'm really just kind of eating what my body feels like it needs. But it's definitely been going to a lighter and lighter diet. So I have noticed that. Right. And you have feel a change gotten rid of a lot of the junk, a lot of the junk by forgiving people too, haven't you? Absolutely. But you yeah, said releasing, absolutely. you know, just giving people mm -hmm. the, in the past, you got to let all that old junk and garbage, let it go. So are yeah. you doing that? Yes, I am. My, my main thing right now is letting go of any any uh, fear or anxiety that that comes up. Any, any, any yeah, because you have to get rid of fear. Another yeah. thing, too, we've been bringing up the ele on the lectures. This might be important to the other listeners. Uh, Julio says, have you noticed yourself being coming invisible? Yeah. It may take a little thinking. Julia, explain that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it takes, I mean. I've noticed. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like I've been, I feel almost as if I've been. I'm becoming less dense, and that's almost a fear in and of itself. Because I like, I it's like I felt like I was becoming lighter, and then it felt like it, it kind of triggered a little bit of a fear because it felt like I was letting go of my body a little bit, and mm -hmm. it and, and so it like like it triggered a fear that I was going to you know let go of my body and I'm not ready to be done. <laughs> you know, so I, I've been. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been kind of releasing, but as, as I as I let go and just kind of like let this process happen, it's like I wake up the next day and I'm like, okay, I'm fine, I'm here, I just feel lighter. Right, <laughs> right. If that makes what sense. The, yeah. yeah, the invisible thing that she's talking about is it's sometimes you're in like a restaurant or in a store or something and waiting to be waited on. You see they're waiting on everybody else, but it's like they don't even see you or I've, it's happened to me when I've been driving 
um, and people pulling out right in front of me like they don't see me. And then later in the day, that same day, I got hit and the person said, I never saw you and <laughs> stuff. But the, but the being waited on is I'll get perturbed and I'm sitting there going, what? And, and it dawns on me because I'm sitting there going, what? Am I invisible? And then I dawn, it dawns on me, oh, I am. It's, you're at a different yeah. frequency. They do not see you. You are invisible. <laughs> so if that yeah, you say so, and then it gets their attention. Yeah, actually, now that you mention it, that happened to me on the elevator yesterday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have one more quick question for you. Um, the, the I was curious about it. The, the kids that are coming in with the DNA already changed, um, I wonder if they're already tuned for the new earth and maybe their parents aren't tuned for the new earth. Um, if, if, you know, you see that happening. I, there's this one thing that pops in my head, though, we might have orphaned kids running around. <laughs> Wouldn't be a good thing. <laughs> no, it, it won't happen that way. Is it okay if I answer this one too, Mom? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, remember, everybody chooses where they are, who they are born to, the whole situation. Um, yeah. One, the new kids... It, or a vibration that would be very hard for someone to handle if they were of a very different vibration. So I bet the parent is not too far off vibrationally. They may not look like it. We can't tell from this perspective where people are in the whole scheme of things. But it's all by a grand design. And um, remember, these are all big souls, big grown-up souls. And, and I know what you're saying about there'd be orphans, but that's assuming that you know where each of these people are in the soul plan and we never know that so that's where we ha that's one of the things we have to let go of is that desire to judge where who's going and who's not going um that's entirely up to each soul and a lot of people are still here playing their roles to help others grow and so they may look one way but actually they're fulfilling their job beautifully and so they're doing exactly as they're supposed to so it's just you, you just need to be concerned about you and that's it okay and what thank you're going through thank you you're welcome thank, thank you for that because that's i think <laughs> i've been getting I'm, I'm a figure outer i like to figure everything out and i've been <laughs> it's been driving me crazy so i'll just yeah. i'll just focus on me <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Just relax and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Dolores. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, but Stephen. That's what we were talking about before, too, with this part of being invisible is because, you know, we are moving into another dimension, and the vibrations and frequencies are changing, and whenever you, you feel you're invisible, you're actually in that other dimension, but you can still see the other ones, and that's why... We're still going back and forth and back and forth. And it's, it's a little complicated to understand because things look the same in these other dimensions. Sometimes it may just be one tiny little thing that's different. So you're moving in and out of other dimensions all the time, and you're not even aware of it. Right. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much. Pretty thank cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's 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 an amazing ride. It's amazing. It really is. <laughs> okay, well, just enjoy it. That's what they say. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, and, and thank you. Okay. But see, Julie, that's what these lad these emails. The people are getting frightened of moving into the new earth. They're afraid of uh, losing okay. connection with the old. So. People are going to be and live in fear. They're going to do it regardless of what you tell them. It's what it sounds like. Well, it's just because people were, that's a natural state is to be afraid of what you don't know. You know, anything new is, is yeah. scary. And and that's what they, there's that old saying, you'd rather stay with the devil you know rather than go to the angel that you don't know. Um, you know, it's just it's a comfort zone thing. So, um, we're, you know, they're going to have to go into paradise kicking and screaming. I mean, I did it. I, you know, we, we are afraid of what we're pushed into or what, even though, and part of what we have to trust and realize is it's not some invisible force that, that's pushing us and we're the victim of it. This is us. This is our higher selves. This is our soul that chose to do this and chose to do this growth 
and chose to do these things, we it through this physical manifestation called this body. And it's just this little bit of consciousness is not does not remember. But if we could just trust that this is ourselves directing ourselves through this, you know, growth. We wanted to do this. We chose to do this and we were chosen to do this. So yeah, it's scary only in that it's, we're not, we just don't know what it is, but don't be afraid of the fact, you know, we think it's somebody doing something to us. It's ourselves guiding us through this and saying, Hey, have fun. It's a wonderful ride. You wanted to be here in this adventure. Let's go for it. You know, so That's just let I go of all that him. stuff. It's, yeah. That's another reason why it's been happening gradually since 2003. Mm-hmm. So that we just get right. used to it. Without, you can't be afraid of it if it's happening so gradually. Right, absolutely. And it just, there's a quickening now. And so that's where it's, it, there, things are starting to happen that you can no longer deny. And that's what they told me. Uh-huh. They said they're stacked, things are stacking now, where before it was like a linear changes, now it's stacking changes. And so it's very hard to deny that something isn't going on, <laughs> so um, or that something is going yeah, on. Yeah, and I but, keep telling yeah. people at the lectures, too, that time is definitely speeding up, and a lot of you know that. You can feel it. Now, it has been scientifically proven that time is speeding up, that mm-hmm. we're no longer living a 24-hour day. I was told it was 16 hours, and Julie said she got, but a few months ago, now it's 12 hours, isn't it? Right, right. Because that yeah. sixteen hours was, I think, a few years ago, and yeah, uh, uh-huh. yeah. when I and was writing we... the book, then I put that in, and this right. has been scientifically proven. It doesn't matter what your clock says. Actually, we are living like a twelve-hour day, and I think you can realize it. Where did the time go? First thing you know, the day's gone, and the week's gone, and uh, it, everything is really speeded up. Right. Then the other side of that is, I mean, there is no time. Uh, on one hand, it's like, because it, I, I know that, I don't know how, uh, the, the time goes so quickly here. Or there's so many things to do, and there's not enough time to do it all. Um, but then we know that there's no such thing as time. So on the other side of that, you can take it and manipulate it and say, you know, I have plenty of time. I have all the time in the world to do these things. But that, So I think that's the challenge here, or that's the the, the, the request is to get yeah. us to go into that and say and and look into that dimension it's a dimension and and do what we need to do and not let it control us anymore now we can control it so yeah because that's like you know it is creating your own reality and if you live in a reality where you don't have enough time to get things done that'll be your reality but like you said you can make it to where you can get things done because you can manipulate it and it, it is, there is no such thing as time. It is an illusion. And the ETs have told me in my books about ETs, mankind is probably the only species in the universe who has found a way to measure something that does not exist. So it's all an illusion anyway. So we might as well just go with it and see where it leads us, I guess. No sense of worrying about it. We can't do anything about it anyway. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. So. Um, well, let's see. I know, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I know, uh, I do want to talk about uh, what's going to happen when we get over to Europe. See, after I get through with the, um, we're having, oh, tell about the conference, too. I'm going to be bringing in speakers. That's going to be right before my class in July. Tell them what dates those are going to be. Because I'm going to be bringing our speakers on the radio show in the next couple of months. Tell them about the conference. July 13th. Okay, um, that will be in July. It will be the 13th through the 15th of July in Rogers, Arkansas. Um, And we have our keynote speakers are Arun Gandhi and Wayne Peterson. Peters? Peterson. Peterson. That All of a sudden it didn't sound right when I said it. And, of course, Dolores Cannon. And then we have... And Arun um, Gandhi is the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Right. And he's a fantastic person, and he's one of our authors. 
Right. And we will also be doing, um, this isn't officially out there yet. We're, we're just now organizing it. We will also be doing some fundraising for his um, Gandhi for Children organization uh, at the conference as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. Because uh, that'll be the first time um, that we've done this. It might be the first a metaphysical company is doing this. I'm not sure. Uh, but definitely the first time we're doing it. We'll be doing it in the London conference as well. So that's very exciting. Um, then we have our authors. Known, I've known Gandhi. He was the only uh, one of Gandhi's family who carried on his grandfather's work. And he had the, uh, uh, the Society for Nonviolence. Right. And he speaks on nonviolence all over the world. So this seems to be a new um, charity that he has developing for himself, isn't it? Um, I, the Lisa, the, the nonviolence is still his platform, and then this is um, right, he's helping the children. Um, yeah. Because we do know he goes to Africa a lot and speaks to different countries over there. Right. Uh-huh. So he'll be here at our conference. And it's also a showcase for the other authors that we publish. So every year we bring in the new authors that we publish that year. And I'll be having them on the show between now and the conference the middle of July. Right. And as she said, this is our seventh one, our seventh conference of the Transformation Conference. And it's getting bigger and bigger every year. And also, we are having it in London, the first one in London, the Transformation Conference in London. And we're bringing Gandhi over there. And he said he has never stepped foot on English soil before, so he's excited about that. And he'll be our keynote speaker in the London Conference, too. So we've got a lot of very exciting things happening in London also. So right. we're going international i guess now with our conference yes and this is the beginning of many great things uh we can feel it uh we're just this is happening so quickly and so our growth is just phenomenal um it's quantum growth i think i don't know um but that hasn't even that's been a times. year has it no that's the times we're in now it's just it's just everything's accelerating. Well, so is growth. You know, it's just, like I said, it's not linear changes now. Now they're changes that are stacked. And that's how this is. It's like these things are happening so quickly and, and to such a degree, it's, it's a lot to work with. Um, but, yes, we have the, the conference here. And then we have, like Gabriel was talking about, he's coming to the class in July. Immediately after our conference, we're having – our level two and our level one classes um, so that we were doing that. We did them so close together so people could enjoy both functions and not have to make trips, you know, for two different functions. And um, we will offer a discount to anyone in the class. They can get a discount on the conference. Um, on the, and that's the 13th to the 15th. There will also be a lot class, of workshops. I'm sorry. Okay, but I think the class is full now, though, isn't it? It's very close. There might be a couple more spots. It's very close to being full. Um, uh -huh. And then also we're having workshops um, after the conference, post-conference workshops, and they're teaching everything from uh, how to do dowsing, how to uh, talk to your spirit guides and angels through automatic writing, how to, I see, Cinnamon is doing um, a certified class on how to, oh, oh, I can't remember the name of hers, uh, frequencies. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Cinnamon, <laughs> if, you're on the, if you're out there. Um, I didn't have notes in front of me, but you'll be interviewing her, I'm sure, and, and talking about it. But she's doing a course on with her cards. Um, Justine Alessi will be doing a class on how to do the tarot, uh, basic tarot to do basic readings. And Guy Needler will do a class, a level one and a level two class on how to uh, do the traverse the frequencies like he does to talk to all the different beings at the different levels all the way up to God. And so all of these will be fantastic. So they're all different ranges from two hours to full day classes from $35 to $111. So you have a broad range of different kinds of workshops that you can, you know, be participant to. It'd be fantastic. So that's what this we have here. This will be going on simultaneous with my class. So 
Oh, there's going to be a lot happening at that hotel that that weekend, that right. whole I, week, really. Right, and I just got a note that the that the uh, July class is full. So that this technology is fantastic. I just got texted a message that the July class is full. So okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> we do have another class in Arkansas in November, but uh, this this is the last one in the United States. So we will leave after the conference, the end of July, we'll go to Europe, and we're having, you can check all this out on my website, but we were going to be, I think the first one, well, first I'll speak in Glastonbury at a conference, and then we're having a class in Warsaw, Poland, and then one in Helsinki, Finland, and Mm -hmm. then Munich, Germany. And back to into England, we'll have one, in, that's usually outside of Oxford in Farringdon, a class there. Then we go down to Rome, and we have a class in Rome. There's about five or six classes in Europe. It's going to go on for about two months. And some of these will have to have translators. So people in Europe may want to decide if they want to go to one that's in English or in uh, different languages being translated. I I know the one in um, England is English, and I think the one in Helsinki is English. The rest yes. will be in the languages of those countries. Right. There'll be. And uh, then, um, yeah. what? No, I'm and just going to say after yes. After that, we after the class in Rome, we have the eleven day cruise of the Mediterranean, leaving from Rome and going all over the Mediterranean to Athens to. Naples to Turkey, and there's going to be, I'm going to be on there doing workshops, Guy Needler will be on there, and we have a large group that is coming from China. They were so excited about it after my class in China, so we're going to have a lot of those coming. So it's just going to be an interesting cruise. And that oh, takes us into yeah. October, so that's how long I'm going to be in Europe. Right. you want to say anything else about the cruise? We only got a few minutes left to sign off. I get to be a speaker too at the cruise. <laughs> a what? Oh yeah, you're on the you're I, a speaker and all of these things. Well, I am at London. I'll be a speaker at London. Then I get to do a workshop on the cruise, so that's exciting. And I think I'll be we'll be doing a panel or something together. So, yeah, it's very exciting. Okay. I can't wait. And they fun. are working on the conference over there, and we're having a lot of very fascinating things happening that are first. So you'll right. be hearing about those as we go along. So right yeah. now, I think that's about all to tell about our upcoming events. We have even more in um, November, but let's save that till later because this is what's going to be happening in the next few months anyway. Right, and it's but all when we leave on t- at the end of so. July. It'll be mm-hmm. three months in Europe, going to all these different countries. So that ought to be quite exciting. That's right. Um, tell them how they can check in then to find out about our schedule. Yeah, so saying it's all on the it's all on the website, and that's an easy one. It's DoloresCannon dot com. Uh, and either spelling of Dolores will get you there. We have both spellings, but it's D-O-L-O-R-E-S-C-A-N-N-O-N.com. And, and just look on the, um, I think it says live talks as well as quantum healing hypnosis. We'll have the schedules um, to tell you everything that's coming up. And we, we keep adding it as we do that it. They tried to find it on our Ozark Mountain site, and they said they couldn't get into it. So it's right. probably better to just, uh, check, click on DoloresCannon.com to find out all the information about the upcoming event. Right. Okay, so I guess that's about it because he's going to pull the plug on us. That hour went by right. very fast. Very fast. As it that's always that time does. Again. <laughs> okay, so next week we're going to have Dee Wallace on and uh, you'll be able to call in and ask her questions too. So I guess right. that's it tonight then. Uh, so thanks everybody for listening and good night everybody. Make it great. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.